Okay, right. <clears throat> so we'll whiz through these and see how we go on. See what time's left. Um, I've actually gone through all these. I made some notes, which isn't like me. It's only because of what I've done that I've done that. When we get to the mono, uh, I've made less notes. <laughs> it takes hours to make a couple of minutes notes, you know. Okay, a trip to the country. So, um, as I said, good story. Great location. In the train, looking beautiful. And you've got some lovely light coming in there. It needs a little bit more sympathetic processing, though. Because um, the lighting you've got coming in there is basically the lighting you've got coming in. You haven't done anything to it to really lift it. And if you look sort of around here, you've got a big you know, light bit. Whereas his face, which is what really needs it, hasn't got it. So you need to do a little bit of twiddling around there with um, where's, the, where's my clear button? I have no idea. Oh, it is. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so just to rejuggle the lighting about and give it a little bit more emotion because that's really important. The emotion that you get from these images. Uh, one other thing that is an is an issue um, when you shoot from a low angle. That didn't work. What was that? Let me try that again. <sighs> Don't draw. That's what I want. There. That bit. See how that's much bigger. His boots enormous. And his knee's pretty big, and his face isn't, because you are low down, and that is closer to you. Now, I love the low angle. I think the low angle works great, but you really need to get him to shove his knees a bit closer together so that it's not quite as close to the, uh, to the frame. So we start off with a mark for this, and I'll stick with what I've already done. That's 15. Naomi Sanderson. A splash of colour. Yeah, and it is a superb splash of colour, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. All this explosion of stuff coming out. Beautiful. Um, and you've got the good shape of his, of his arms along here like that, looking good. And these humongous great big glasses just peeking through. And he looks like he's got a nose like me as well. But what you've also got is a lot of stuff down here, which doesn't really add anything to the picture. So have a look and try cropping it somewhere down here or, you know, somewhere around there, wherever. Just try it and see what you get. I think you'll find you improve it dramatically. And it will really concentrate your attention. Right, I'm whittering on far too long. 14. I made notes so I could be quick about it. Winter in the park. Yeah, it's a lovely, cold and clean feel to it. I love the way you've got the, the snow just catching the branches and the way you've got the colour of the, the snow on these branches and the same is reflected in the, in the building itself. Looks really good. Um, might have been an idea to make if it's physically possible, it might not have been, but if you could have made a step or two to the right and then these branches wouldn't have been interfering with a, with a building. That would have helped. Um, 
looking at this, taking the whole image in, you've got this area here, which is very dark, very heavy, and the rest is light, light and airy. So it may be worthwhile thinking about lopping some of that off. I'm a lopper offer, so apologies for that. Um, so if you take some of that off, I think you will find it improves the, the image quite significantly. Um, what am I on? Winter in the park. So having said all that, I'm going to give you 16 because it does have a lovely feel to it. In the core, Dukes. <clears throat> ah, yes. Um, where are we? Lone Tree on Hutton Road. And when I looked at this, first of all, I thought, yeah, that looks really interesting. Um, I love this sort of... Um, this archetype overlay that you've got on, on here. That is quite effective. But you look a little bit closer and you go, well... Actually, what you've done, even though it's quite effective, I think you've offset the image a little bit too much. I, I think you've offset it by the amount that you've got here, sort of that that much. And uh, it's, it's meant that the image you see in, in the squares, the overlay, is a long way from what you've got on the background, on the main image. And I think you see here, you've got a dark bit there, and then it's thing comes down here, down here. That, I think, spoils it a little bit for me. Um, you, know, you could quite easily have, uh, you know, not taking it right from the edge because the edges of the background picture doesn't really matter. So you only blow it up by a little bit. So you just get a little bit of off, an offset. I think that would have worked better than that. You've also got to look at the main image, which is this one. Because effectively you've got all this is a frame for your main subject. And your main subject has got to have all the, the elements and compositional tricks that you need to make it work. And if you look at that, it's rather bottom heavy. The tree's a bit close to the top there, and it's a long way from the bottom there. And I think a little bit of juggling about, uh, you could have made that from a really interesting picture to one of the absolute better ones. Uh, it's still going to get 17. Cheek. Evening dip. <sighs> right, well, we've got some bloke jumping off a lump of wood into some water. And I'm going to hold that one. Okay. Raven glass sunset. Yeah, I keep trying to look at my notes and not really seeing them. Never mind. Beautiful sunset sky. That sky is gorgeous. And you've got the, the, the boat here, which is in a, a good, strong position. Uh, I like these things to be in the light because it does enhance the actual silhouette. But offset to one side is, is not a problem. Um, the issue I've got, though is these banks of cloud here. You see how they interfere with the mast? And then you've got this bank along here, which also interferes. And those, for me, spoil that shape. And that's a shame. So, uh, Raven Glass gets 15. Jan Kent. Oyster catcher. Yes, uh, it's a rather good oyster catcher portrait. 
Uh, and you've done reasonably well. It's nearly sharp enough. Not critically sharp, but nearly. Uh, I like what you've included. I think that works very well. Um, not totally convinced that the breast going out down there and the back coming out there is the best place. Um, but that's okay. That's, that's just my personal preferences. Uh, it just needs to be a little bit sharper, particularly around there, and the eye isn't quite as crisp as it could be. Um, now, you've seen this on uh, as it's been retransmitted by Zoom, and Zoom is doing quite a good job at reducing the size of these things. Uh, so they will probably look sharper on your screen than, than I've seen them because I've seen them full size. Uh, the other issue I've got with it, you can probably guess, is that and that and that and that. Those uh, highlights in the background really do get in the way. So Oyster Catcher is going to get 14. Bee and Bramble, yeah. You've really caught the front of that bee beautifully. That is lovely and crisp and sharp. The back end's going. Oh, excuse me while I just shut this up. Maybe it will shut up. Christine Woodward would like to do. <laughs> Be quiet! Go away! Go away! It's Christine Woodward. I can't even shut my phone up. Apologies for that, everyone. It will be quiet in a moment. Yes. <sighs> right, apologies for that. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. Front end of a B. Brilliant. Back end, going a little bit soft, but, you know, we've all got to, to fight with this, this problem, haven't we? And it's the laws of physics. Gets in the way of good photography, doesn't it? You can't get the depth of field you need because the laws of physics won't allow it. Never mind. If you could have got a little bit further around, you might have been able to get the bee all the body of the bee in, but I'm not too worried about that. Uh, I love the juxtaposition of the bee and the, the flower bit in the middle there. There's a couple of issues I've got with it, though. One is that petal just going up and skewering the, uh, the bee, and that bud there, which... Again, it's a bit of a nuisance. They're, they're quite demanding of attention, and that does hold it back. Uh, it's still going to get 17, but it, uh, those bits just pull it back a bit. Kirsty Railton. No. Gelfling, yes. <clears throat> now, it's a very brave lighting you've done for this beautiful subject. Got this gorgeous model, lovely eyes, and quite an enigmatic look. Uh, I like the, the diagonal you've got, diagonal of the eyes and the face. That works well. But like I said the lighting is dramatic, um, a little bit on the, the heavy side, a bit harsh. So the, the shadow under her nose and around her mouth is very dark. And the processing that you've done hasn't really done a great deal for his skin and has made a hair. These beautiful bits of red that are in her hair made them almost sort of, um, you know, they made them glow. They're just rather bright. So I think your processing has let you, let you down on this one. Uh, great model. And I think you could have done rather better on that if you process a bit easier. Um, Gelfling gets 12. Uh, 
Yes, in solitary. Now, this one, uh, it's a different take on an environmental portrait because you've got this as the face. Uh, and in the background, you've got the artist. Well, you assume it's the artist. So that, it, it's a different way around. And I think it would have worked except for the detail. You often find it's attention to detail which makes all the difference between a really great image and an okay image. And you look around and you've got this bloody notice. Um, you, it probably wouldn't have been happy if you'd have ripped it off, but it would have helped to help your image. But as well as that, you've got this head sticking up there and you could easily crop it across there so it's not in the way. You've got this bit of green felt or whatever it is just sticking out, something else sticking out here. Lots of stuff in the background, this bright bit down there. And even though that is the main face, I would like to see more of his face. So I think it's a great idea. It just needs a bit more attention and, and it will lift it. So 14. Howling with laughter. Yes. Now that is an absolutely brilliant face, isn't it? You've got to photograph that. It's absolutely super. Uh, it's, you know, just totally hilarious. And you go with it. But in competition, that on its own is not strong enough. Um, you've gone in very tight at the sides. So you're missing its feathers around here and you're missing stuff around here. But you've got a lot up there, a lot of space. So the whole image becomes bottom heavy. And you've got these unfortunate shadows of the, the fencing that it's behind, just also getting in the way. So while well, you've, you've got to shoot it, and it's, it's going to be a personal reminder of, of you know, your time there, in competition, it's not really strong enough. So that one gets 13. Nuttach on D branch head. Okay, I'm not sure what the D branch head is, but it's dead. Uh, lovely shape, Nuttach, great. They're, they're beautiful birds, these. And this one's got a fairly straight um, pose back towards you, but turned around so you get a good profile. Uh, I like the branch. It's not too, not too strong. Uh, it's quite a pretty one. Couple of things. You hate me saying that after a bit. <laughs> one, it's a bit big in the frame. Uh, it's a habit these days. A lot of people are going for big in the frame and you don't need to. And also, when you go too big in the frame, you, you get uh, sharpness issues and other issues because you've blown it up too much. Now here, if you look at this, the feathers on the back are lovely and sharp. In fact, they're so sharp, you can cut yourself on them. But the head, the important bit, the head and the eye, isn't pin sharp. Now, if it was a bit smaller in the frame, you might have just got away with that. Um, I think you probably over sharpened as well, which is why these are too sharp. Uh, and when you just when you try to sharpen using the normal methods anyway, something which isn't quite sharp, it goes a little bit blobby. So unfortunately, the nut hatch is going to get to 15. Mike Atkinson. 
<clears throat> Twisty Tarsine, yeah. Gorgeous tree. I love the shape of that tree. Coming around her like that. It's beautiful. All these sticky out bits up here. Wonderful tree. Uh, and it's in such a an amazing place. All these clints and grikes and stuff you've got at the bottom here. And just to add a little bit more, you've got a sunset. So you've got, in theory, all the elements. But I don't think you've quite made the best of it. Uh, the sunset itself is very bright, very demanding, and it's just a little bit off from the, the actual tree. Uh, the bottom part of the tree down here is getting lost in the rocks. And with that bush behind. So if you could have gotten a lot lower down so that most of the tree, tech, particularly this, this bit down, down here, would have been above the top of the rocks, that would have been amazing. And if you moved a little bit to your right, you could have stuck the sun behind the tree so you have a, a bright spot just coming around the tree and it would have put some separation between these bushes as well. So, um, as it stands, I can only mark what I can see. So that one gets 13. Barges. Yes, a very pleasant arrangement. Uh, beautifully lit. You've managed to keep enough detail in the edges of the glass. So they are just separate from the very bright background. Uh, I've no problem with the bright background in this, this case. Uh, the lighting coming through works very well. I love that reflection there. Just, just catching the side of the of that particular vase. But then the more I look at it, I think, yeah, I've got three lovely vases and some beautiful colours in there and some lovely lighting, but I'm not seeing any real connection between these three. You've got a tall one with a bit of a shape in it. You've got a medium-sized one, but Mm, it's a different shape to this one and a slightly shorter one, but totally different shape. I can't see what connects them together properly. So for me, it looks like a, a very well executed technical exercise, but it hasn't got enough to hold it together for a competition. So have another go at arranging these or other vases without lighting. And I think you will end up with a beautiful shot. As it stands, it's still going to get a 16, but no higher. Alan Phillips. Yes, Seahawks Sky. And I think this has got most of the things that you need on it. Really well done for choosing the, the shutter speed. Absolutely spot on. You've got, it's slow enough to catch some movement in the propellers and a lot of people freeze these. So well done for that. But it's not too slow that the plane itself isn't sharp because it is, it's beautifully pin sharp. Um, you've got enough room in front of it for it to fly into. That's working well. There are a couple of issues, though. That's holding it back a bit. <laughs> One, it's underexposed. Uh, it's probably about a stop under. Um, these highlights on the tips of the wings and just on the edge of the 
cockpit. Those are not white. And they're specular highlights. And they should be white. So, and the, the, the body of the plane is looking a little bit, a little bit dull, a bit lost. So, have a play with your exposure. Have a play with getting your highlights, your specular highlights up there where they should be. But then you need to carefully bring everything back so you still get the same feel. And while you're at it, just lock that sky off down there. That cloud isn't doing anything for this picture whatsoever, not a sausage. So get rid of it. Um, as it stands, not so. Who have we lost? We have lost him, have we? We look to have done. Had it all gone away? You're back. Are you there? I'm here. <laughs> yeah, we lost you just when you said lose the bottom of that. Oh, you lost me. <laughs> you lost you on your back. I do apologise for that. Yeah. Right, so what was it? Oh, I was lopping the bottom of that off. So I lopped that off and Bob's your uncle. So you need a score for that. And as it stands, that gets 17. Lucy Wilson. Sunset moment, yeah. Now, I love the concept behind this, the idea. Uh, I think it works really well. This lone, rather straggly bit of foliage down here, beautiful against this, this orange background. And you have some interesting stuff in the background just to keep some, you know, keep it all looking exciting. That works really well. But I'm not sure that your processing has really got the best out of this shot. Um, down at the bottom here, all this is very dark. I mean, it's very, very dark. That looks beautiful. Lovely contrast between the, the background and the foreground. But down here, it's all gone muddy and gets lost. So I think it's worthwhile having to play around with that, perhaps putting a grad on the bottom up here, brighten this up. Um, make sure you've got plenty of contrast between the main stem and the background. And then while you're in there, this one, just just clone the damn thing out because it's just been a nuisance. Um, and put whatever colour in you want, and that would be fantastic. As it stands, it only gets a 15. KTR Wabby. Safe Haven. Uh, another great idea. You've got some really fantastic ideas in your in your society. Uh, and this works very well. The idea works well. The, the, you know, the, the barbed wire around the nest. Three lovely eggs in there. A couple of things that bother me about it. One, the black background... Is a little bit too black. I, I seen it as black. I want to see a bit of texture in. Now I'm a judge, so the chances are, if I saw texture in, I'd want it black. So because you, you know you can't please any of us because we're all thick. Um, but and say I would like a bit of texture, but not much. But the thing which do bother me are these highlight ones. He's here. They want tidying up because they become really demanding. 
And you don't need those in. You've got the main essence of it. You've got the the nest. You've got the barbed wire, and that is sufficient, I think. Uh, so as it stands, that one still gets a 17. Red Haslam. Uh, Jack Daw, yeah. <clears throat> uh, it's good bird. Um, and it's sharp enough. It's sharp enough throughout. The background over here is beautiful. You have a little bit of mess behind there, unfortunate. Uh, that's pretty much the way it goes. Uh, uh, it's also too big in the frame. Uh, I know you don't want to hear that, and it is something I do say a lot these days, but it is too big in the frame. So 16 for the jackdaw. Mike Atkinson. Be bold in your choices. I love that. That is absolutely gorgeous. Really, it's beautiful. Standing there with a little hands of a clock on it as well. Really good. I like the idea of bees in the background. Soft, but not too soft. Uh, I love this one here. Sort of bowing in deference to the, the main one, you know, with these petals coming down. So your, your main parts of it, I think, are superb. It has got some issues. One, that leaf in particular, and that, could you have moved in a position where that flower was just coming in down there? That would have really improved that aspect of it. No end. If you'd have moved a little bit to your right, you would have got a little bit of separation between these two. And again, that would have helped. So perhaps a little to your right, a little bit further down, you might have just got these in a good place. What it wouldn't have done, and you may need have needed to have been a little bit drastic, uh, you might have had to accidentally drop something on this one behind because that one behind is a nuisance you know it's these petals around here it just get, really gets in the way so it's not that stem is it but if you could have just accidentally dropped something on it to make it go away and just move down a bit that really would have helped you wouldn't want to damage it of course not deliberately that wouldn't have been fair. Uh, and the other thing is, all this stuff on the bottom, it's just a distraction at the, at the bottom there. You know, lop it off, get rid. You don't need it. Uh, so we've got, where are we? Be bold as it stands with these extra distractions gets 15. Carol Weatherly. On the beach, Elgol. Yes. Beautiful background, absolutely gorgeous mountains. And you've got some, some wonderful light just creeping through and popping onto them. Uh, so that should be fantastic. Unfortunately, you've not really brought out that light. It's sort of some slightly brighter streaks that's not not really working as strong as it could do. Love the timing that you've got on this, this wave at the front here. That was perfect because that gives a gap. If you got it so it was just breaking and white all across, it would have put a barrier there to stop you getting further out, further into the picture. That gives you a gap to get through. Well done. Um, compositionally, that 
is a bit of a nuisance. And it's unfortunate that that isn't on. But you can't have everything, you can't have both. And at the front part, there is there's no oh, well that's going. <laughs> there's no light on that at all, unfortunately. So it needs a bit of bit of tweaking to give it some life. Bring out these these light bits bits on the background and try to give a bit of life and light to the foreground as well. Um, so Elgol gets 15. Ken McGrath. Encroaching storm. Oh, yes. When, when you get light like this, you've got to photograph something with that light on. Because that, that contrast, that really strange feel of light that you get when it's really dark on one side and bright on the other, it's beautiful. The problem is finding something to photograph when it happens because it doesn't happen for long. And I think this row of houses down here with the car there and the cars there isn't really strong enough to hold the light and the interest. And we've got a lot of beautiful hills that are in total darkness. So it's a matter of being aware and ready and have something that you can point your camera at that really is going to show off that beautiful light. So, um, Elgol, El, oh, I'm poaching storm, that's it. Uh, 14. Stick without a bird. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, um, yeah, it's a stick without a bird. That's what it is. Uh, I'm not quite sure where it is. It looks to be in an ocean somewhere. Uh, it's a good, good attempt at a, a minimalist type image. But really to work well, a minimalist image needs more space around it so that you've got the very powerful effect of a lot of negative space working for you. The other issue I've got with this is whatever treatment you've done um, has given it some really strange colours. You've got this really odd pale blue posterised into this darker, not quite blue, and we've got some green coming in here, but the colours are very strange, and the effect on the, the, the twig without a bird is rather uncomfortable. Um, yeah, it's a nice idea, uh, cute title, but I think you really could have done a lot more with it. And I don't think the processing has helped in any way. Uh, so Stick Without a Bird is getting 12 tonight. Incoming! Uh, yeah. Uh, one of these uh, wasps at the, at the pool drinking. Well, You've got a pair of wasps down there drinking and the reflection, of course. But what adds to this is the flying one. You've got that flying in the super. I think perhaps the gap between these two is a little bit much. I'd like to see it. Uh, I know I'm asking a lot, but I would like to see it a little bit lower down. And the other thing, which again, is very difficult for this type of shot uh, is the 
totally black background really, really wants to have some texture in there. Um, solid black rarely works. Sometimes it does, but for a nature type shot, really doesn't. But a little bit of texture in the background and a bit less of a gap between the two. Uh, and that one gets 16. Really slockery. Last of the Sun, yes. <laughs> and this is, is, is quite a, a different take on sunset. And I think the composition with the, the um, lighthouse and the sun works very well. There's nothing else really that gets in the way. You've got some something, a tree perhaps, I have both, have no idea, and something else in there that's in the sun that, that works and adds some more stuff there of, of interest. This is, unfortunately, another of these images that's underexposed. Um, I know it's meant to be dark, but you can still get the dark without being too under. The sun needs to be really brighter than it is for the, the picture to work. And this cloud, which is wonderful going across the sun, isn't coming out here. It might be, but you can't see it because it's disappearing into the background. So little bits like that. Tweet your exposure. If you can find the cloud in the actual background there, and super. If not, just you only need a hint of a of a tint of something in the background there. Uh, and when you're doing your processing, be careful that you don't get halos around because there's quite a strong halo around the, the lighthouse. Um, but I like the composition. I think what you've done is good. You just need to tweak it to get it just right. Uh, and last of the sun gets 16. Colleen Yates. Heron. Uh, yeah, Heron in flight. <laughs> Never easy, although big birds are a bit easier than small ones. But uh, good effort for that. You've got uh, the wings in a good position, hanging down like that. That works. Um, you've got the the heron just before it hits this this twig, so that's not too bad. You've managed to do that without. If it had gone any further it would have intersected with that and, and spoiled the, the image reasonably quite a lot. A couple of minor problems. Um, this reflection of the wing, you don't need it. Just lose it completely. You don't need that uh, messy bit up there, which is brighter and again takes your eye, so lock that off, which gives you that sort of shape which is better for what you're trying to do. And the, the, the other problem, though, that we've got... I've lost my mouse. <laughs> um, the important part, that bit isn't sharp. So the heron gets 14. Long tail tip, lovely shape. Like that curve, because it tails comes comes down there. Um, it's a, a reasonable branch that it's on. You have some things behind, unfortunately. You've got that and that behind. You've managed to squeeze the uh, the tip between the two uh, obstructions, but. It would have been better if they weren't there. Um, this is also a little bit knobbly and a bit big at the bottom there. Uh, maybe worthwhile 
having, having a bit of a rotate, get this part of the twig coming out of the corner, gives a stronger diagonal. Uh, it makes the bird a little bit more comfortable because it's not leaning backwards as it is now. It's just leaning a little bit more forwards. Um, with this shot, the lighting hasn't been good. Uh, you've, you've taken it so that the exposure on the front of the bird is about right. But it does mean that that behind there and that there where the light is caught and down here have completely burnt out and that's unfortunate um but it's not end of the world so what have i given that one uh that one gets a 15. chris armstrong <laughs> She grew tall and menacing. Right. Uh, yeah. I see the, the, the idea behind it, where you've got the different images where she's uh, growing up there. That's fine. Uh, it's a, quite a strong pose. Yes, it's from behind, but legs slightly apart, arms spread out like that. And with some interesting light just catching the, the side there. That works very well. Unfortunately, a face has got sod all white on it. That's a technical term for now. Um, and it needs some, desperately, desperately needs some light on there. But you've got to push some light in. Perhaps from behind when you're taking the shot that would work, work to just to lift a face out of the gloom. And that would totally change that image from, yeah, it's an interesting effect to, wow, that's lovely. Uh, so, sorry, but the um, Tall and Menacing gets 13. Full gob. Well, when, when, I, when I read that, my brain mustn't have been in gear. And I wonder, what's a gob? I don't know a bird called a gob. And then I actually opened my eyes, looked at it, and said, yeah, it's got it's gobs full. Lots of food in there. In the... <clears throat> now, remember the, um, uh, the long tail tit a couple back, where the... Um, the light, well, your, your exposure was for the, the main body and the highlights had gone. Well, this time, the exposure isn't. The exposure takes into account the highlights and the lighter parts are beautiful. They're in, beautifully in there. They're not burnt out looking good. But the body is quite dark. And it's a bit too dark. You could, I think, it's certainly worth trying, brighten that up, bring those shadows up so you've got some, some detail around, particularly around the eye and the face. That would make a, a massive difference. It does have a couple of other issues, though. You've got this white thing just behind its tail, which is always going to be a nuisance it's always going to get in the way and then you've got beautiful background around here but a blue bit there and this horrendous green bit there um you might be able to do something about that green bit uh and you might just be able to do something about the blue bit and if you brighten it up and give it a pro proper title uh, birds on sticks don't do particularly well in open competitions uh, but if you give it a proper name a nature name not a cute name you've got a fighting chance uh, so full gob gets 14 as it stands 
Blue tit in the sun. Here we've got yet another duck on a stick. And, well, what can I do with a duck on a stick? I can hold it and have another look. Harrison Sickle and Sickle Tarn. Yeah, beautiful place to be. Wonderful reflection. Uh, you've got these, these super shapes coming down here, going off down there. Lovely. You've got a magnificent piece of uh, geology that you can photograph. And you've done a competent job under the circumstances. But the lighting is just flat and boring. And uh, landscape doesn't want to be uh, a nice shot of a beautiful subject. It's got to be a fantastic photograph of a nice or beautiful subject. The, the emphasis needs to change. And here you've got the beautiful subject, but the lighting has just been really difficult for you. Um, so if you keep going back to there and if you get some good light, just coming on here, some patches of light. If you haven't got them, pull them in. It's not difficult. Um, this bit in the corner, you don't need it. It's not adding anything. It's just a distraction on the corner. Get rid. And I like the way you haven't included the sky above here, apart from these bits here. You don't need them. Again, get rid. They're a distraction. You don't want them. Uh, and then decide what you're going to do about this bit, because that disappears over there somewhere. And you need something on this end. You do need something. Either that or you decide to pick out the most beautiful part of this and go in really tight. You know, maybe something like that or perhaps even more of the reflection up there. Not that rock down there. Uh, have a look. Be sure what you want to show a judge because a judge isn't going to see what you saw. You've got to really force them to, into it. Um, so Harrison Sickle gets 13. Riverside reflections, yeah, beautiful reflections. I love where's my mouse gone? I love these reflections down here. Uh, I like these windmill type wind machines. Uh, those work very well. It's gorgeous, gorgeous sky, beautiful orange sky, and amazing reflections. That works really, really well. The bit I find lacking is the main subject, which are these, this housing, no, this street of houses. And while you're starting to get some good reflections in these windows, it's not really strong enough to hold it together. And that bloody van that's there, um, you need to blow it up or something. Uh, so, Perhaps a little earlier or a little later, you might have got some enhanced reflections on here. Maybe if you've gone a little tighter and lost, oops, wasn't very straight, was it? And lost all that, lost the van and all that there, and really pulled out the, the feeling that you get on, on these houses. It might have just worked. So nearly there, not quite um, 14. <laughs> Short eared eared owl looking for prey. Uh, yeah, you've got the good wings there. Head looking at your eyes, absolutely straight on you. Bit of blurry black grass at the bottom, bit of blurry background around there. Uh, so, pretty simple shot, and I hold that one. Oh, yes. 
Graham the Curry. Oh, he makes a great model. <clears throat> um, and he has some super props. He doesn't always arrange them well, though. So that's up to you as a photographer to really get in there and put stuff where it needs to be. Uh, things like that beautiful wooden cup right in front of there, so you can't see it. Um, I didn't know he was playing hunchback because he's got whatever it is on his back there. Uh, this particular shot, the lighting isn't quite bringing out all the, the shadow detail. So it needs to be a little bit further forward. So you're bringing out some of the shadow detail and you get a bit, slightly better shadow on his face. Uh, so I've forgiven him, it uh, must be 16. I've lost it on my thing, but it's gotta be 16. Ruth Lockery. Right, a tree on red. Uh, yeah, another idea that, that can work really well. Uh, similar to the sticky up twig with the stuff behind it. Here we've got this, this branch here, standing out, lovely color, beautiful colors behind it, nice and soft. That works. Uh, blue sky, uh, perhaps completely blue would have been better because it really would have brought out the colours, but it's not bad. Problem you've got is these that are getting in the way and this stuff behind it. So if you could have manoeuvred yourself to get just that on its own without the others, that that would have worked very well. As it stands, it's just gone a bit messy. Uh, so tree on red gets 14. Butterfly house. Well, this is possibly a drone shot or perhaps you've got some bloody long ladders. Um, either way, uh, I'm going to hold it. Waterfall on River Brittle. Beautiful waterfall, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I think you've got the right shutter speed. I know not everybody likes cotton wool water, but I think it works really well in, in this. I love the contrast between the, the cotton wool water and the, the hard edges of the, of the, uh, the rocks around it. Uh, I like this little bit of a hill behind with the soft clouds behind there. That works really, really well. Unfortunately, the time you took this, the sun was catching the water full on and giving these really harsh light and shadow bits. And I think that spoiled it a little bit. I think you, if you could have waited while some of this mist or cloud moved just in front, just between the sun and, and the, the water, it would have been a better image. One thing that really does bother me, though, is this stuff at the front here. It's soft, um, it's blobby, it's got a different feel, it's different colour, different feel to everything that's going on back here. So I think you've got a much stronger image if you lose that. It just gets in the way. It spoils this gorgeous feeling back there. Uh, so after saying all that, um, I'm going to give you 15. Ken McGrath. Red shank. Beautiful red shank. Good pose. Good size in the frame. Not too big. Notice I haven't said too big in the frame this time. Uh, the water, mucky water in the background works really, really well. You've got a very limited colour palette. You've got basically the browns and the orange and that works very well and there's enough separation even though they are a similar color it's just in the brighter bit there's enough separation between the bird and the background well done there if anything i would do two things to this you've got that up in the corner there which i think is a little bit distracting and lopping that off along the 
wouldn't detract from the image. You've still got enough headroom. And the other thing, this out of focus stone down here, I don't think you need it. Again, it's not adding. So again, another lop across there. And yes, it's a little bigger in the frame, but it's still not too big. And you've got to keep everything in that you need. So that was 17. Chris Armstrong. Uh, right, automatic fall over. <clears throat> yeah, a um, bit of a cringy title. But <laughs> these shapes and colours of the swirly stuff is beautiful. I love that. It's absolutely gorgeous. And some of these leaves really work very well with it. They, they just sort of all come together and give some gorgeous feeling around there. Does have some issues. You've got really bright green stem going right out of it. You've got another one right on an edge here. You've got lots of these green stems here, which to be honest, they're really not adding to the rest of the feel of it, of, of that image. And then you've got this big leaf, which becomes quite a focal point. And you've got to look at it, but it takes you away from where all these are leading. These are all leading in here. And you've nothing in there, but you've got this over to one side, which really isn't helping. It's, it's a distraction from what these are taking you to. And there's nothing really pointing to this. So leave your, your swirly layer and then attack your leaf layer and get rid of the stuff you don't need, like any of the bright bits, any of the big bits, and then look at what you can put in there for it all to lead to. And that would lift it umpteen marks. Um, as it stands, that one gets 14. Radish. Yes, radish. Well, you've got these, these radishes, these three radishes, and you put them together and you arrange them like this absolutely beautifully. On this wooden table, which is quite an interesting background, uh, and you've got what for most people would be the hardest part, getting that arrangement, getting that to work together. Super. And then you don't make the most of it. Why, why chop these off here and, and here? Why have these going straight up and down? Things are so much stronger on a diagonal. So put these on a diagonal, maybe going down there like that. So you've got the wood coming across. You've still got the, the three radishes, also probably on another diagonal. Get all the leaves in. Get some interest everywhere. You can really turn this from that lovely arrangement to the whole thing working really, really well. The lighting isn't very exciting, and you could do something about that, get a reflector, just push a bit of light in, uh, perhaps selectively, um, or try different other shots. You know, like just down there, just that bit. That's a cracking shot. But as you've got with the leaves coming out, you've, you've diluted your super image immeasurably, unfortunately. When you've got something worth shooting, shoot it and keep shooting it until you've got something fantastic. Uh, so Radish gets 13. Watching the, the farm cat. Brilliant. Uh, really, really well seen. Uh, I love the cat sitting there. Bit scraggy, but it's a farm cat. It's a working cat, a bit manky. Um, looking at you. And then you've got this face at the side here, just, just looking in. 
and looking at the cat. And the cat's doing what cats do, ignoring it completely. That works really, really well. That bit is a mess and it's a distraction. You don't need it. Just chop it off. Top of the face, going across there. Um, you might want to change the balance slightly by taking a little bit off the bottom, but not too much because you'll encroach into there. And that really would give it, would improve this again. And it would have got into the final set, but as it is, it gets 17. Right, cheek. Mystic Shards of Memory. Yes. Uh, this is a very clever picture-in-picture -picture type image. And difficult to deal with. Abstract images are very difficult to create, and they're also very difficult to judge. But I'm looking at this, and I enjoy the feel that you've got. I, I love this image in the center. I think that works very well. I look at this image behind, and I see why you've used that type of image, but I can't for the life of me think why you've used that particular image, because it's so different from this gorgeous image you've got in here. And I think you've certainly missed the trick where you've really made something extra special of the main central image and then something similar as the background again it needs some design putting in not just plonked in the middle uh, so you know maybe with a different background offsetting things a little bit perhaps you want to offset that so that's the center that's the that's the interesting bit where things are happening, you know, where you've got a, a bird coming in here looking at it, you know, with the eye and the nose pointing at it, and lots of shapes happening. But again, make a design of it. Perhaps put that on a third or off centre, or just you know a little bit off instead of quite central there. So it was somewhere down here or down there. Really would have strengthened it. Um, and again, put the picture that's inside this lot, again, also perhaps off-centre, perhaps down here, to make a design of it and use another piece of similar type of rusty stuff to point to it, to let all everything move in there. It is potentially so powerful, but as it is, you, you've, you've missed it. Uh, so 14. Balancing trick, yep, great timing, super short. Uh, and I'm sure uh, he would have been absolutely delighted with it. You did, you did give him a coffee, didn't you? No, okay, maybe, maybe not. Um, he would have been delighted with that. For a competition shot, though, it's too messy. You've got all this stuff down here that's getting in the way. You don't want any of that. You've got chimneys in the background here which again they just get in the way you want something clean for competition shot uh, he's sort of looking down here looking worried but there's no light on his face at all um, and the sky is looking a bit dull so super image for giving to client but not great for competition uh, and balancing trick um, I've still given it a good a good 16. Jan Kent. Inevitable DA, or I presume it should be decay. Uh, love the idea. Skull vase, dying plant, uh, strong colours, strong red colours there, working really well, powerful thing to look at. Um, Hint of a skull behind, bit of reflection of the skull. It works. Uh, the concept works, but I think the treatment needs 
for more work. Um, problem with photographing it, you've got that is interfering with the, the actual skeleton, which is again a bit unfortunate. And also, when you're photographing it, this metal band around here, just cut it off because it's again another distraction. It's something else you don't need. <coughs> I think you need to make the background a little bit more realistic to fit in there because the treatment you've given the skull is very different from the feel of the image. Or you've got to put a texture on the image to get it in a similar type of feel to the background. So it's all consistent. So it's a good work in progress. It just needs a little bit of little bit of work to bring it out. 15. <coughs> Uh, third force, third force bridge construction. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, he's tried to make something beautiful from this this amazing piece of uh, uh, engineering, and it's it's wonderful looking at it. There's all sorts of fascinating stuff, but to make something of it, you need to work with what you've got and. Do something. These struts, these supports, just appearing from the middle of nowhere, they really need to be coming from up here, leading down. So everything leads down to this area. <clears throat> and coming from the corner is so much stronger. So if you've got a little bit more on this edge, so you can push these up, up there without chopping the top of those off, Brilliant, that'd be great. Uh, as it stands, eh, not quite there. Also, the treatment you've given it is a bit bland. It's a bit flat. You need to give it some life, give it some punch. Would lift this amazingly. So um, I'm giving you 15 for that one. Lucy Wilson. Uh, what's water? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful mountain, lovely water in front, some pleasant hills around it, a lovely scene, but there's no light on it, there's no out. You have got some, a little bit of light coming in on here, not a lot, but a little bit. You need to enhance that. You need to make sure you've got some separation between this hill and that background you see it's all it is a little bit brighter but the two are merging together because it's not that clear a differentiation um and down here yeah you've got the stuff in the water as you as you need them but there's no light there's no life and you've got to put that in you really do so go back again when you've got some light or if you haven't got some light put it in um, 14. <laughs> setting sun. This is another, another of these um, shots of the setting sun with that, that lighthouse there. Uh, this one, you haven't got the, um, the processing artifacts, but we've got a lot of other stuff coming in. Uh, it's like a slightly different time. A um, little bit earlier, the sun's actually in the sky. Lovely reflections on the water coming out there. We've seen further back in the scene, but we haven't got anything in front of the sun. I can see there are some clouds there, but I can't see them in front of the sun. And again, that would help. Cloud going through as you've got on the other one. Uh, reflections are lovely, but why have we got this stone not coming through here, offset there. It just seems very strange. It's an odd place for it to be. I think if you could have just moved a bit more to the left to get that in there, that would have helped. Um, you've got a lot in this image. And do we need all that sky? And do you need all this down here? For the image you've given me, no, you don't. Um, so that one gets another 14. 
Great pancakes and waffles. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a competent shot of the market stall, Christmas market stalls. Um, nothing nothing wrong with that. It's well lit, but we've got the shopkeeper with a back to us, so no face there. And you don't know what she's doing. You can't see what's happening. You've got this other woman who's crept in at the side here. Um, it's not a good look, and it's not a good three-quarter look. Her nose is sticking out the side here. You've not really got any engagement with the eyes. Uh, she's waving some money about. And it just looks like she's wandered into your shot. Uh, and the other thing is, it hasn't got the Christmas market feel. It's bright, and the Christmas market don't feel that bright. They have a they have a certain emotion about them, and that's not quite coming across in the image you've got here. So next time, have a have another play, and don't be afraid of talking to the person who's serving there, they will often, not always, but often be quite happy for you to take a photo of them. And if they don't want to be in the shop, they will often move out of the way while you photograph the stand. Uh, so that one I've given 13 to. <laughs> Junctures. Well, what can you say about that? It's different. Um, do I like it? Well, actually, yes. I'm going to hold that one back. Snail. Yeah. Beautiful shell. You've captured that shell really well. Just enough light just to, to, to put some highlights on the corner there uh, and on here so you can see the shape, shadow showed you the shape as well. So your, your exposure is pretty much spot on with that. Well, well done for that. Um, the shot though is, is perhaps a little busy. You've got a, a lot of a lot of these leaves around here that are not adding a huge amount to it. Uh, if you could have taken it while it was perhaps down here rather than up there, it would have given the, the snail a little bit of room to move about. Uh, and then that highlight wouldn't have been quite as as distracting. So perhaps a little bit tighter. And they don't usually move very quickly, so you can take lots and lots of shots of them. And make sure you do, because I have seen some fantastically beautiful images of... Um, it's not a squirrel, is it? It's a snail. That's right. It's got a swirly bit. Um, so good effort but we get in a uh, 13 for that one. Cathedral in the canal. Yeah, lovely light on, on these buildings at the side here and on the, the cathedral. Beautiful reflections. These people are unfortunate, but not end of the world. And these are, again, a minor annoyance, but not end of the world. Um, Shadows are perhaps a little bit on the heavy side, and maybe if you could lift those shadows just a tad. Uh, and looking at this side of the image, do you need it? Do you need these twigs that are just coming out into nowhere? Do you need this dark bit of stuff coming around there? I don't think you do. For me, you don't. So you could lose that, which gives the emphasis more on the important bit, which is this and its reflection, and will give you a much stronger image. 14. Hold on tight. And I don't know how he's hanging there like that. He's got claws, hasn't he? And he's, he's embedded the claws into the rock. I'll hold that one, please. Not that I want to look at it again, because it's too scary. <laughs> Alfresco dining. Uh, yeah, brilliant idea. 
I, I love the positions of, of pretty much everything you've got in here. You've got the, the litter bin, you've got this happy chappy having his brew and his fag. Um, glasses are steamed up with a steam coming off the, the coffee. I love the, the pigeon behind looking to see if it can catch anything. So I think you've done really, really well with that. It's a attention to detail again, which gets you. You've got that twig, you've got all these fag ends and chewing gum and mess. And you've got this, this drain pipe coming out the top of his head. These are the bits which make all the difference. They make or break the image. Um, these are a bit bright, but they are his, his things, and you could probably just get away with those. But watch for things on the edge. Watch for, for that just cropping into the edge there. This handrail just coming into the edge there. Watch for these things. Uh, and I think it's probably worth tidying that. And you've got quite a lot of stuff to tidy up. And then just make sure your skin tones are right and you've got a, a cracking image. As it stands, it gets 16. Me today. <clears throat> Peekaboo. Yep. Love the uh, the frog's head just poking out the out of the water. And it's in a good position. Your lighting has done really well. You've managed to get your exposure spot on for that you can see it's wet and you can you've got the shadow just as enough everything's working right i think you've kind of you think you've put too much in though you've got again all this up here you know do you need the top of that because it's just taking your eye away from the the frog do you need all this blurry green stuff on the bottom no you want that that will strengthen your image. Um, as it stands, it gets 16. Down start. Right. <sighs> Are you exhausted as well? <laughs> <sighs> okay. Right. Let's get let's get these these final ones. I still haven't decided which is going to win yet. Mm. So, evening dip. Uh, I love the idea. I think it works really well. Him just coming off the, the edge of the pier. Beautiful. It's got a couple of issues, though, that are, uh, annoy me and stop it getting top marks. See these boards on that angle down there? I'm not OCD, but that annoys me. It really does. It really gets to me. Uh, and it's not difficult to straighten those out. Um, or you could lop in a little bit so that it's not so obvious. It's just those around there really do annoy. Um, and the other thing, the halo around the edge of those trees, it's a dead easy fix. Please fix it. You need to fix it. Otherwise, it's superb and gets 18. Dan Johnson. Blue tit in the sun. It's just a bird on a stick, but it's a crackingly well done bird on a stick and the stick with that shape coming round there with those little flowers down there and some little buds down there, even that little sticky up bit. And nothing untoward coming out there. It's beautiful. It's absolutely pin sharp. Uh, head towards us, bit of a catch light in the eye, beautiful background. Yeah, the tail is starting to go a little bit. And that, that and the fact it's not doing something more exciting is the only thing that's holding it back a little bit. But um, I gave the blue tick 19. Gary Barton. 
Short-eared owl looking for a prey. Well, like I said, it's, you know, a short-eared owl just looking at you, not doing a lot. Uh, it, you know, it hasn't got a, a dead rat in its claws. It's, it's not chewing something out, but it is flying towards us. It's this beautiful background, lovely foreground to keep it all anchored. Um, nothing too untoward in the front. Quite often you get some blurry bits that really get in the way. That, that is, uh, I'm going to annoy you now, um, but that one, I'd like to have another look at that if it's all right. Uh, right, Butterfly House. Uh, like I say, really long ladders. This is absolutely beautifully processed. You're really bringing out all the details in there. It's not gone too far into the tone mapping that it looks unreal. It just looks a little bit high for real, but only just. A couple of minor things, you've got some people there, but they're hidden in the trees, so I'm not worried about them. And another one with halos around trees. Fix them. Dead easy. When you're doing processing, high contrast edges will give you halos. You need to get rid of them. So that one um, I, is, is an 18. Keith Taylor. Junctures. Right. Junctures. <clears throat> this is very different. Um, it's a triptych, fine. But it's really well designed. You have the one there, you have another one there. It's like room 101 with the various shapes. Here's just shapes working well. And right in the center, you've got that red dot. You have found some artwork and you've photographed it and you've really made it yours. So I want to know a look at that one as well, please. Uh, hold on tight. Well, yeah, this is this is super. Uh, climbing up here. Um, I like the stuff you've got down at the bottom there, so you can see how far up he's climbed. Just holding on with his fingertips, you know, uh, <laughs> rather in than me. Skin tones look quite good. There's a little bit of a sign there, which is a bit of a nuisance. You can't really go down and shift it. Uh, you could lose it, and you'd lose that bit there. Uh, I don't think it would affect your your image particularly. So I think that would work just as well. Um, so that one is um, perhaps a little bit on the bright side. Uh, 18. Naomi Sanderson. Which takes us back to these two. <coughs> Short-eared owl and junctures. Right. Well, can you go to junctures for me, please? Uh, as you can imagine, it's really close between these two. Um, and I decided at the end of the day that junctures was going to get 19 and the owl gets 20. So Reg Haslam for Junctures and Gary Barton for Short Ear Down Hunting. Well done. Okay, right, here we go. <clears throat> um, yeah, love the uh, love the shape of that. Uh, make sure I'm, let me just move that out of my way. Uh, yes. I love the, the shape of this, this building fitting within that puddle. I love the fact that you've got these rectum fangles in, in the building. 
and these outside it in the puddle. I think it's a very well seen. It's a photographer's photograph because anybody else who saw you taking that would think you're completely demented. Why are you taking a picture of a puddle? But it's a photographer. It works. Um, the only things which bother me are these bright yellow lines that uh, that are around there. Those I find a distraction. Um, otherwise, uh, it gets seventeen. Steve <coughs> Weatherly. Eyes on me. Yeah, beautiful dog. And you've tried to do something special with it. Uh, you're giving it a texture. Um, the texture sort of works around here, sort of. But somehow in the, the processing of it, you've uh, gone awry somewhere. And the quality of the dog image has gone. Um, highlights have gone. Shadows have gone. And he isn't sharp anymore. So I'm not sure what you've done. Have a look, see what you've messed up because something in your processing has gone, gone wrong. Um, so eyes on me gets a uh, 13. Oh, it's our, our curry friend. <coughs> Same things apply. Uh, you've got beautiful cup getting in you know, in the way of the background. Uh, he hasn't got a hunchback this time, but he does have a bit of chair sticking out. Well, you've got to position yourself to avoid these and control Graham so he's doing what you want him to do, not what he wants to do. Uh, I like the, the pipe going up there. That points to his face. Uh, the the feather on the, the quill, mm, it's pointing out, pointing over to nothing really. Uh, and the scroll which is rolled up doesn't really need a pen holding as if it's being written because he certainly can't write on that. So he could hold it in more relaxed, pointing at himself. Uh, again, lots of shadow detail on the uh, on the hat. But otherwise, it's it's all right. It's all right for a, for a Graham Kerry one. So, um, more than that, 16. Ruth Lockery. Ashton Memorial. Uh, I'll just hold that one and move on. <clears throat> Upside, doing down bolts. Yeah, the beautiful things, these. Uh, very photogenic. Trouble is, they've got so much stuff around them. Um, you've got a lot of shifting to really get at the at the, the beauty of them. Like you've got this big lump of wood which is right in the way. This bloody great wheel here. Uh, this big lump of, big snake of, uh, of rope there. Um, more tyres. So you've got rubbish around them. But you've got to make the most of it. Now, this big lump, the wood, unless you shift it, it's there. So there's not a lot you can do about that, apart from chop it out. Don't, don't include it in the photograph. But the top of it is lovely. So maybe you do want it in the photograph. But decide where you break it. See, so there, you've, you've cropped in right on the edge of that wheel. And you either want that in or you want it out. So it's deliberate and doesn't look like an accident. Uh, the other thing on this is your, your monochrome conversion has let it go a bit, a bit grey and, and dull. Um, so on, uh, yeah, 13. <coughs> Little greed. Beautiful little birds. Uh, and you've got down really low. You got down to its level just about. Uh, looking beautiful. It's 
you haven't got anything else in the frame that you don't need. Um, so that's fine. I think even your mono conversion is okay, but the lighting is against you. You've got this round here and down there and round here where, that's that's burnt out. Um, and it's looking a bit a bit scraggy there. Um, so you've lost it on your lighting, I'm, I'm afraid. Uh, so Little Greed gets 14. <laughs> Majesty, yes, and that is a majestic tree. It's beautiful. You've done a very competent uh, conversion to mono on that. Uh, the sky is what it is, but there's so much tree there, it doesn't matter. But when you, you come right down to it, you start to look at what the design is. Um, you've got, you know, twigs and branches and stuff and all sorts of stuff all around going all over the place and not really giving you much to look at. The fascinating part of it, this type of tree usually is, um, is the base where the roots are as they join onto the, the rock. You've got this gorgeous stuff down here. That's beautiful, lovely shapes. And maybe if you'd have concentrated on, on those, maybe down there, perhaps down there would have been better. Then that would have given you simple, simple shapes, beautiful shapes, and really would have given you something extraordinary to look at. As it is, it's too busy. Um, so I've given you 14 for Majesty. <laughs> Carrion Crow. Uh, yeah, and it's Cracking Crow. Uh, very good crow, some good lighting on it, beautiful background. Yes, you got blobby bits, but I don't mind the blobby bits on this. I think it works very well. They don't get in the way. Uh, it's all sharp, beautifully sharp, from, from nose to tail. Uh, the branch that it's on is a good shape, uh, quite gnarled and not too bright. So I think you've done very well on that. Uh, and you got 17. Mike Atkinson. Misty Morning. That old man of store. Uh, yes. <clears throat> and if you look in the background, you can see the mist everywhere and the actual old man of store and these rocks around it. Looking craggy, standing out of the mist. But overall, we've still got quite a, a dull grey feel to it. Now, the, the mist in the background can work to make the, these, these rocks really stand out. But the minute they're not, they, they're just sort of a bit... Not much contrast, not much character to them. And... Looking at this as well, you've got a lot of space at the top and very little at the bottom. So that, that one's actually running out. And so is that. So perhaps a slight repositioning to get a bit lower down, a bit less on top. And in your conversion, make sure that these have got some strength to them, uh, some highlights coming through, as well as the, the dark shadows. Um, so, uh, where have I gone? Yeah, I agree. 15. <clears throat> Ken McGrath. The last time, and this is, is a very poignant image. Uh, I love the, the, the intimacy of the, the two hands, the... Uh, the quite young and the less young hand. I think that, that part is absolutely beautiful. That watch is, for me, rather more than unfortunate. And you probably could 
lose it. If you cross in along here somewhere, got to make sure you leave enough room around the hand. And then you could come in down here. So you still got the hand and you might, you might just need to clone out a little bit of the, the band. That would strengthen it. A uh, little bit more off the top there. <clears throat> Again, so your focus is right on the hand. Then, a uh, couple of things you need to do. One is tweak your lighting a little bit so that the hand is slightly brighter. Maybe a third half a stop brighter really would lift it. Take the rest down just a little bit. And uh, you need to give it a little bit more life because uh, it's starting to go very grey. So you need a little bit more contrast in there, a little bit more oomph in there. Uh, because you've done it with flash, you've got some unfortunate reflections off, off the, the less old skin. Um, so with the right careful treatment, you could bring that out. You could, you could you know, hide the effect of the, uh, of the, the flash on camera. So that one, I think I've given, yes, I did, 16. Alison Townley. Uh, it's another climbing one. This time the mug is upside down. Still clinging on. My fingertips, I don't know how. I can't hang on the other direction by my fingertips without falling over. Um, I'm going to have another look at that one, please. Winter. Right, we've got uh, another of these shots with the, the church and some uh, foliage, uh, unsupported dangly bits, some of these, but it's allowed these days, I'm told. Uh, so the foliage is acting as a, as a frame. I think that works reasonably well, apart from this one, which is a bit of a nuisance. Uh, not much you can do unless you cut it off or swing from it or whatever. Um, the rest works all right. The, the lighting is quite interesting. Uh, although the shadows are perhaps a little bit heavy. Perhaps if you bring it up just a tad, it might bring out some of the, that, the shadow detail. And mm, 15. Katie Bobby. Flower in vase. Right. This, this is a... I like that. This is, a, this is a difficult one. A difficult one for judges because it breaks so many bloody rules. Um, I don't mind a lot of, so, of some of these rules broken. I think the idea behind it, this highlight around here, you probably can't see it, around here, this is beautiful. That works really, really well. I would like to see a hint, and I do mean a hint of light round this side of it, because it, it disappears into the black. And I think if it just had the, the slightest hint to just differentiate it, so it was not just running straight to black, I think that would strengthen it. I could be wrong. Um, it needs a tad more light where you have light anyway. Um, maybe half a stop up, just to make sure you've got some, some proper highlights. Oh. It does certainly help. Love the detail in the in the flower petals. Um, as it stands, running into black, I'm going to give it a 17. Alan Phillips. A Fisherman's Tale. This has a, a lovely feel to it. Uh, it's a very good quality. It's 
very careful grayscale conversion. It has some issues, but it's worth having another look at, please. A snowy entrance. Uh, yeah, this one uh, has got a lot of good things for it. Um, you've got the trees on, on this side, it's giving it a, a stop. You've got the, the path coming around. The, the snow on the branches is lovely. Disappearing into some mist in the distance. Now, would this benefit from someone's stood here? I don't know. Might be, might not. It's a different image if it is. Um, <clears throat> I do think it does need a little bit of something somewhere in there. I love this this sort of path running through there. I think that is that is wonderfully gorgeous. And this one is quite pleasant. And I think just disappearing off into the distance, distant mist there is perhaps not quite as strong as some of these other bits. So on the whole, I'm going to give that one um 16. and he's a stat yes flower in vase now this is another very different one the vase is out of focus it's on a white background you've only got the the flower that's sharp and um, you've got enough separation it's it's a light flower on a white background, but you have some separation there, and that works really well. Um, the bit that bothers me a little is its position in the frame, the whole thing. It feels bottom heavy. You've got a lot, where's me, where's me thing gone? You've got a lot up, okay. There, we're going back again. You've got a lot of space up here, and it sort of breaks at an uncomfortable place down at the bottom there. And that's the only thing which I'm finding holding me back a little bit. I love the idea. I love the way it's been done. I just think its position has just slipped a bit. Um, 17. Kirsty Railton. Despair. Yes, and there's certainly a good look of despair in those eyes. I think you've, you've dealt with the model very well, positioned very well. Uh, it, it's not flattering lighting, but it doesn't need to be. There's a couple of minor distractions. Uh, you have some bits on the window. But really, it's worth just getting rid of because they are minor distractions. You've got this little bit of fur or something just creeping in there. Just deal with that. And then while you're in there tweaking, just give a little bit more life to, to the eyes. And that I think we'll just lift it into what would have been the final lot, but otherwise I'm going to get 17. Ruth Lockery. Cathedral in the snow. It's a beautiful snow shot. Uh, it's a, a, a lovely shot for, for putting on a, a card or for using it for advertising or whatever, because you've got quite a reasonable amount of space there that's white and blank. You've got space here for putting other text in. You've got space over here for adding things. So that's its strength commercially. But you've got all this, this, this tracks, the snow, the pavement, the roofs all point into this area here and you've got nothing in there. Um, 
And for a competition, it needs something. It's a lovely shot. It just needs a little bit more strength to hold together. Um, so I'll give that one 16. Team the core dukes. Along the Lancaster Canal. <clears throat> Another lovely shot. Love the backlit uh, bridge. A uh, little bit of light coming over here. I think you could enhance it slightly, uh, bring out these light parts a little bit more. I don't think you need quite so much of this area, particularly with the, uh, the power lines or telephone lines or whatever running through. And it would do no harm to the image generally to take off that top bit. So you've got less of a distraction above it. Mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, um, yeah, give it a bit more oomph as well. Uh, 16. Brad Cheek. Smoking Dragon. <clears throat> uh, yeah, well seen. Uh, you've looked up here, you've got the got the shape of the the head shape at the top there with a bit of cloud behind it. Works well. Um, well that's really about it. Your, your monochrome conversion has left it a little bit bland and the processing has left quite strong halos around everything. So you need to do a bit more work on that to, to do a better con better mono conversion and uh, uh, less artifacts coming from from your local contrast enhancement. Uh, Fifteen. Keith Taylor. Masai Elder. Yes. Um, Superface. Uh, look, I love the the gnarled ear we've got over here and the, the sticky out ear we've got over here. Uh, it's quite a quite a good face to, to conjure with. Uh, minor distractions behind, but nothing really to, to worry about. Uh, problem we've got is you have massively oversharpened it. Uh, and it's even showing on this this small version of it, uh, but on the the full size one, it it is painful. You can cut yourself on any part of its skin, um, and these little bits of stubble around here, you really wouldn't want to put your hands near those because of the go down to the bone, and it's a shame. So good, a good face. Go back, reprocess. Put, give some life in the eyes because they really are dark. Take, turn down your sharpening and you might have a, a shot that's, that's uh, worth looking at. Um, 12. Oh, it's another of these triptychs. Uh, and it's a funny looking thing, isn't it? It's a very funny looking thing. I'll hold that one if you don't mind. If you do mind. A safe pair of hands, beautiful family shot. And you would be absolutely delighted with that. Really shows the connection between the the young uh, young chaffy there and the old chaffy here holding on. Um the cannon sign is unfortunate. Not because I'm I'm a part of the opposition because I shoot cannon myself, but it's just unfortunate that it's there. So lovely family shot, probably well received, but in competition, it needs to be a lot stronger to hold its own. Uh, 14. Sparks will fly, yes. And you can see them all, all these sparks flying out here. I'm not quite sure what you're whirling about over the top of your head. Uh, it looks quite scary. But I think it works very well. 
Um, you've lost quite a few sparks coming off the sides, but I don't think that can really be helped. Uh, I like the way they they bounced on the on the water and on the sides there. Um, yeah, you got the eye of of the storm, so to speak, on top of the bridge in a strong position. I think that works quite well. Um, Sixteen. Andy Foreman. Misty Moody Morning Mono. Okay. An alliterative mouthful. And yes, you can see some mist in the background there. And you've got some interesting lighting just catching on the, the damp parts of the, of the street. Uh, and probably when you took this, it, it looked quite exceptional. But the camera hasn't captured what you saw. So what you need to do is to turn what the camera captured back into what you saw, and it needs some quite heavy processing to, to get that to work. You really need to bring out the, the detail in the, in the windows, the highlights, on the side of the buildings, you know, they, they, these bits around here are beautiful, but they're getting lost in all this darkness. Um, so you need to go back and reprocess that, uh, and then you might find something coming out of it. As it stands, it's a 12. Lurking in the shadows, yes. I wouldn't like him lurking any, in any shadows. I was wandering past. Um, <clears throat> he does these really, really well. And most things on here work to perfection. There are a couple of issues. One with the original lighting. Yes, this type of film noir has this this dark and light and moody image, and you do tend to hide eyes, even though these days we would prefer to see the eyes not in such shadow. Uh, but we really want to, a little bit of something around the back there, a little bit of rim light, just to lift it from that background. And it only needs to be a tiny bit. The other thing is you're processing, you've got to deal with the extra bits that have crept in. There's a bit on his tie there. There's the watch strap. There's that highlight on the button. There's these highlights on the sleeve here. Really minor things, but they all make a difference. And the other thing, the flame is darker than the cigarette. Now that's not possible. So you need to make sure that the flame looks like it's emitting light, that it's lit up and about to light something. And also you really want to, to do something with this. That is going to cause a catch light in both eyes maybe even lighting them just a tad. So attention to detail will make all the difference. Again, lift it, 16. Carol Weatherly. Uh, the Crossing, yes. Now this, it's a very competent record shot of this street and crossing and would do brilliantly if you were commissioned to shoot that. It's an excellent shot, can't fault it. Um, yes, it's got cars there, but you're going to get them. That one driving off the really could wake you while that had gone. Uh, that would have just nudged it a little bit. Um, but for competition, you need something else. You need more than a commercial shot. Um, and I'm not sure you're going to do it here from with this this type of image 
Uh, so, uh, crossing 13. Morning, Fisher. Yes. I really, really, really want you to like this. I love the idea. The, the bloke in the boat, semi silhouette, in a corner with all the water around him. Super. I just find it's neither one thing nor the other. I want more water, less of him for a very powerful minimalist image, you know, quite considerably smaller, perhaps half that size in the frame. And that would be a real strong focal point, really pulls your eye and the rest <clears throat> works as a very powerful negative space. Um, but that size is just too big for it, I think. And the quality of the image down here in the in the shadows is losing it. It's not quite as as good as it could be. Um, so well, I really wanted to that to do well. It, I'm going to give it 16. Dan Johnson. The old priest. Well, you really set yourself a task for this one, haven't you? That is not an easy shot to take. Uh, absolutely not. You're shooting at high ISO, so your dynamic range is right down, and it's far, far too much for the image you've captured. Um, Highlights have gone. Shadows are blocked up. So technically you're struggling. But if it wasn't for him just peeking out behind, you could have turned the issues into advantages and gone for a very very um, grungy type feel to it. But with him there, it just destroys the image completely, which is a real shame. So um, the old priest, um, 11. <laughs> old Glasson. Uh, yeah, we've got a uh, quite a, a busy dock here. You've got all these boats around here. You've got a narrow boat on the side there. Lots of water with texture in. Um, a fairly grey sky, but you've managed to bring in some... Uh, some more unsupported dangly bits, some more branches to hide some of that sky. And yeah, fine. You've got a lot of interest in there. But you haven't got one thing which really grabs your attention. The narrow boat and those boats are fighting for attention. So you've got to go between the two. And you come to this to, to this narrow boat and it's closer and it should be more interesting, but the shadows are blocked up. So you end up going over here and you're getting lost in all the the stuff that's going on. It's not simple enough, it's too much. You know, that is a brilliant boat, but you've got this humongous one behind it, and this one at the side the and all the the sticky up bits, another technical term. Uh, just interfering with each other. Uh, so, Old Glasson gets 13. Ashton Memorial. Um, I'll shut up and hold that back. Spiral Passage, yes. Very well handled. Uh, it's a very good mono conversion. You've got some beautiful texture in the top here. 
lovely feel to the uh, the cobbles that go around the path there. But then when you you've done that, you've you've had a look round and you you've looked at all the details and all the super stuff that's going on and and you've got a window there with nothing to see and you've got half a window here with nothing to see and and all that's what it is uh now maybe you could have done something with the with the windows and had something interesting outside i don't know i'm finding that this curve here is becoming rather long it's pulling you out of the image because you you come in in here and you're having a good look round and you come onto here and then you come down here and you end up gone i just i wonder whether if you lost the bottom of it it might just concentrate your attention into the main part of the image and hold you in there as it is i'm i'm getting lost but it is a beautiful mono so i'm going to give it a 16. Gary Barton. Uh, a wild millstone. <clears throat> yes. You have um, beautiful hills in the distance with some lovely recession, uh, some interesting shrubbery, and this fascinating millstone up at the front should be perfect. Unfortunately, it's got no bloody light on it. Sod all, now, not a sausage, nothing. And it desperately, desperately, desperately needs some light. You've got the bits that you need, but you haven't got the light to lift it. Give it some, oh, excuse me, some life. It's also a bit tightly cropped on the side. You need a little bit of space on the edges for this, this millstone to, to breathe. And you've left a couple of stones down here that you really don't need. So go back when you've got some light and shoot some more. Or if you feel up to it, in post, put some in. Um, I know people, in fact, I was out on a walk with a friend and it was blowing a gale and it was just dull as ditch water there was no light anywhere and when i saw the photos after i thought was i on the same walk because it was beautiful there was light it was gorgeous it can be done so if you feel up to it put some light in uh as it stands um it's a 12. <coughs> excuse me <coughs> weekly shop this is another uh, record shot of what's going on in the in the shop, <coughs> and it's quite interesting. There's lots of things happening, lots of stuff going on here. Uh, some people about um, can live with her leaning over over that. He's unfortunate with his back completely towards us. It would have been better if he'd been turned towards a little bit. Can live with that just about. Uh, this woman with this really dark, dark, dark coat on is a pain in the backside. Um, you can't see any of it. She's just taking up a lot of room. Um, and this bloke here is quite scary on the edge. So it's these, these extra bits which make a massive difference. This would probably work very well without that one, without that, um, in an exhibition of stuff that, that shows, you know, flogging things, markets, or something to do with this place. Um, but again, as it stands, competition, uh, it's not really the uh, 14. <laughs> Judging the show. Yes, this is another triptych. And you've got a super character. Uh, I don't mind the 
that background. Uh, I think it works with what you're doing. Uh, I've got a major issue with that straight line. I don't like it. I don't want it. And I would really, really, really not see it there. Um, so don't have straight lines in unless it's a definite design element. And he looks great looking in there. <coughs> and he looks good looking in there. Or it could be that one looking in there. But those two are almost the same. And that's a shame. <coughs> if you haven't got another shot, then take one of those two out and make it a diptych. Uh, the cut out around the grass, make it a bit softer, a little, you know, fading out rather more and get rid of that hard edge. And then you'd have a good image. There's nothing wrong with diptychs. But this doesn't make a triptych because those two are just too similar. So choose one, get rid of one. If you've got a better one of him stood there looking this way, aghast, then use it. As it stands, it's not quite there. Uh, so that one gets 15. <laughs> Dan Johnson. Mystery nut. Yeah. I really not sure what to make of that. Um, it's alien, isn't it? You know, it's sort of uh, going to be a face hugger jumping out of there. Scary. Uh, it gives you no sense of scale. You've nothing there to, to tell you how big the damn thing is. You don't know whether it's big or small. <clears throat> that is something super to have in a, another image, you know, as, as part of some sci-fi scary stuff. Um, as it is, the quality is not quite there. It's a bit, a bit clumpy. Uh, um, maybe you've gone in too tight. Maybe you've sharpening's a little bit heavy or the processing is a bit bit on the heavy side so it's looking a bit um quality wise not quite there uh so mystery nut gets 13. <laughs> house plant through dimpled glass yes you have here, part of a, a really fascinating abstract. Uh, abstracts are really, really difficult. And I think this bit is wonderful. Absolutely gorgeous. This third is dull as ditch water. Um, so reposition, make that everything and then try to find one that is a little bit stronger maybe you know that one might be enough just to give you something to rest on when you've had a look round um and it is so close to being a very good abstract but it's just not quite making it uh, so that's 14. Lighthouse at Burnham on Sea. Uh, yeah, another simple image. Again, it's too big for a minimalist, uh, but it's nice and simple. Uh, I have no problem with all this water here. It does act as a, a bit of a negative space pushing you up here. Uh, sky is simple with a few fluffy clouds floating by. Uh, I like this light a bit as it flows through the you know what i'm going to say it needs some light it's flat i mean it's completely flat and you've got a sky with hardly any clouds in and we should have some light there's got to be some light somewhere around there and those little fluffy clouds passing by should light up selective bits so we've got to have some, some light in there. Um, so give it some light and you'll give it some life 
and it will just just sort of lift out of there. Um, Fifteen. <laughs> Ken McGrath. Fishing boat at the bay. <clears throat> uh, again, we've got we've got a fascinating subject. The boat here uh, in the dry, uh, a bit of wet around it, but out of the water with some simple plain sea behind it. So well, that should work very well. But look how grey and dull it all is. It's probably, looking at that, about two stops under exposed. Uh, and you have a halo around it around it as well where you've tried to enhance what you've got there but you haven't brought the exposure up well if it looks right on your monitor check your monitor because there's something gone awry somewhere uh, it's probably just too bright which is often the case um <clears throat> also you've taken this from a fairly high position because uh, we're looking down on it and we're not getting any strength we've got a lot of area up here which again isn't doing anything we've got some stuff around here kitchen sink or whatever that's been thrown out i think you need to go back to that and work on that try to make it try to do your your monochrome conversion so that it works well no loss of shadow detail so two stops increase exposure and chop out all the stuff you don't need. Then you might have an image that's worth worth looking at. Twelve. Ingleborough. Um, right. You got a, a lovely snowy scene in the bottom. Uh, bits of snow everywhere. Not not covering everything, but in patches, uh, which makes the the ground look more more interesting. Uh, it's a lovely recession in the background and quite a, a reasonable hill sort of peaking above the clouds, looking really interesting. And then you've got some odd looking uh, clouds in the sky. And have a look at it. When you, you look at the, the ground and then you look up to the mountain there, you've got to start looking at these clouds. And what are they doing? You're taking you away from the picture. You don't need them. You might want to leave one in there over the top because it's got an interesting shape, but you don't need these others. And like I keep saying, it needs some light. Now, I think you might have some in here but your monochrome conversion hasn't helped and it, it's gone again very gray and flat um so ingleborough gets 13. sword uh yeah that's a that's a lovely shot um simple uh i'll hold that one please Approaching storm, and yes, you can see the storm clouds starting to gather over here. Uh, it hasn't got that magic light quite, uh, but it's getting there. Uh, you can get a the, you get a feel of it in the 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 grass and the the foliage down here. Uh, trees in a good place. Um, although I'm not sure why, but the quality of the tree, particularly on this side, is a bit lacking. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, I think your monochrome conversion could again do with a little bit of tweaking just to make sure you get out the light that's there because there is a lot of light on this. You've got a strong shadow down here but it's not really coming through um or so 15. 
Mike Atkinson. Oh, yes. Ready for the music. Uh, yes, a very interesting character. And uh, you've, you've tried some uh, quite uh, dynamic lighting, uh, split lighting for it's split right down there and with a bit of rim light on the side here. Well, should be fine, should be really good. But it's not quite coming together. I think what you've done is you've got your lighting probably about right on, on this side, your, you know, your big soft box over here. And I think he's perhaps moved his head just a tiny bit away from it. So the light's coming from slightly behind instead of right at the side. Uh, so you're losing a lot of the lighting that you should be getting on here, the split lighting. Uh, you've got some other lighting bouncing back, which is lifting the shadows, but actually, you know, maybe not. I think there's something very strange going on around here. I think it may well be the, the processing where you've tried to pull it out of the out of the shadows. Uh, you would have been better to to leave most of that in shadow and just bring the eyes up because that eye is completely dead. There's nothing, no life in there. Got a bit of a catch light in there, but not very strong. And the ring light you've got is just lighting up that bit of hair and that bit of hair. So it's not doing the full rim to separate it from the background. Uh, your mono conversion is, again, a little bit grey. So work on these. You've got a cracking subject and good lighting. You just need to make sure that you make the most of the lighting that you're doing. Uh, 13. Uh, yeah, this is another abstracted image um whether this is somebody else's artwork or not i wouldn't like to say but i think you've captured it very well there's one bit of lighting that does bother me on here and that's this bit that comes across there around here just that little bit lighter and gives a, a bit of an edge there which feels a little bit uncomfortable you know, it gives a bit of a triangle down there doesn't quite work that, but <clears throat> otherwise, I think the lighting is good. I think the position is good. Um, yes, it's a solid black, but you've got enough of a differentiation at the front here and at the back there so that it it doesn't really matter. Um, so, 17. <clears throat> Red Haslam. Towered by the Kelpies. <clears throat> uh, this is probably the second good Kelpie picture that I've ever seen. Most of them are just quick snaps. This, you've put some effort into it. You've made it yours. By taking that low angle, shooting up, and positioning the, the big head there, just fits in with a small head down there. Uh, I think that works very well. Only thing which which bothers me a little bit is there's a lot of space at the top and you don't need it, just lop it off. It's not doing any good. But otherwise, I think that's working very well. It could stand with a little bit more oomph, um, local contrast enhancement, just to en exaggerate the, the highlights and the, the shadows in the faces of the, uh, the plates that make it. Uh, but that goes 17. Gary Barton. The Yacht. <clears throat> uh, good composition. Uh, you've, you've put the, the yacht on a third. Good strong place for it. The rope holding it in just disappears out there and that tethers it to that side. That's absolutely fine. Uh, the, the highlights catching the water there gives some interest. <coughs> but like the, the other one, <coughs> the other yacht one we saw the, in the colour, 
you've got that bank of stuff there, which is interfering with the rigging. So that gets in the way and breaks up this shape. It also needs a little bit more more oomph in the uh, in the monochrome to really give it some some life. Uh, Fourteen. Misty mornings, yes. And you have gorgeous misty morning, the mist hanging in the in the valleys, the uh, beautiful hills, a little bit of detail in the sky, not too much. Beautiful recession disappearing off there. Uh, some lovely water, lovely reflections in the water. And what I'm guessing is some beautiful detail around here. This is another shot that is underexposed. And you need to lift all this area. Lift it up. Even you just you just bring the shadows of the whole thing up, because then it'll also bring these up. Lift those shadows. Uh, give it a little bit more life. Maybe a little trim at the top and the bottom. Uh, get rid of the... Uh, you can hardly see it on here, but there's a... Um, uh, a sensor spot on there. Get rid of the sensor, sensor spot. And this will go from the score I'm going to give it to probably the best tonight. But I can only judge what I see, not what I imagine. So you get 16 for that. Please work on it. It's, there's so much potential there, Naomi. Naomi Sanderson, yeah. <laughs> Mine! Uh, yeah, it's grabbed a nut and it's eating it. Uh, and you've gone in close, and that's fine with the, the squirtle there. No problem with that. Lighting isn't good. The, the head and the eye are a little bit in shadow. You could tweak that and bring that to life. Uh, but what's this? All this. It might be on your frame, but do you need it? No, because that is a massive distraction, just pulls you right out of the frame. You've got another quite strong distract, detract, distraction down here as well, uh, but you could just darken that down and perhaps darken these highlights down. Lift the, the light on the, the head and the eye. And completely lock that off. You don't need any of that whatsoever. And then you've got a cracking shot. As it stands, uh, over a third of the picture is not wanted in there. 13. Uh, Memento Mori. Yes. Uh, Love this concept, love the idea behind it. The, the flower, beautifully treated, dealing really well with that. We've got some gorgeous textures in the in the flower. Uh, the skull, uh, done in tight, chop the top off, fine. A uh, little bit of space underneath, that's super. Uh, I think you could improve this by opening up these shadows a little bit. I think they're just a little bit too heavy. And you don't need it to be that heavy for this to, to maintain the feel of it. Oh dear, someone's snoring. Sorry, I bored you. <laughs> um, so that, that I think will make a big difference. 16. Mailton. Right. And that's the end of the mono section, apart from the hells. Yep. Okay. Oh, right. Ashton Memorial. Uh, <clears throat> beautiful position. You've uh, done really, really well. Gorgeous textures on the on the stonework. 
lovely texture in the sky. It's underexposed again. So if your screen is showing you this is right, you really do need to, to uh, profile your screen. Um, I think if you'd have come a little bit further down, your lens probably wasn't wide enough, but you could have done a panel on it, a stitch on it, uh, so that these come to the edge there, that would help, and need a little bit more space to put the sticky up bit on the top there, uh, 18. Carol Weatherly. Right, evening at Borderstone, uh, another climbing one, and it has something about it, but I think this one we're too far out. You've got a lot of black here, which isn't doing anything, and you've got a lot of black over there, which isn't doing anything. I think you could crop in here. <sighs> Not sure how exactly how much, it's up to you, but maybe something like that. Then you still get the feel of him dangling off this rock in the middle of nowhere, <clears throat> in the dark. Uh, and I think that would strengthen the image no end. Little bit of care with your shadows, bring your shadows up just to tweak, your highlights down just a little. And I think you'll have an even better image, uh, but I'm still going to give you 18 for that. Naomi Sanderson. Oh, yes, a fisherman's tail. Very good quality on this. It's a good feel to it. Uh, the lighting in general has been done very well, although the boots are becoming a bit lost in the shadows. Now, you have put a vignette on this. Now, maybe a slightly less, less of a vignette may, have, may help. Um, love the pouring of the, of the um, whatever that is, cider, grog, rum, whatever. Um, love that flow, flowing through there. Uh, lighting on him is good, but you've got a practical light here. And that is not working because that is not casting any light on him or his face. And it really needs to. And that's where you need to put some a little bit of effort in to turn in that practical into an actual lighting. So it needs a little bit of light, just a little bit on the side of his face, a little bit on the side there maybe a little bit in there as well. Uh, it's got to give some light, otherwise there's no reason for it to be there. Um, otherwise, uh, it's another 18. Andy Foreman. Oh dear, it's this again. Um, right, this one. <coughs> I think... All your highlights and all your shadows are spot on. I think they're in. But if you're using this on anything that where it might be projected, I think you would be wise to tone your highlights down. They're not burnt out, but even on my screen, they're starting to look a little bit close to it. So if you pull those down a little bit and perhaps bring your shadows up, just a little bit, only a tiny, tiny bit on the shadows, then when it's projected, it might look as good as it should. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have another look at that before I make a final decision, if that's all right. Ashton Memorial, beautiful uh, record of this, uh, this building. Yes, you haven't corrected the verticals, but you're trying to get the ceiling in, so you can't correct the verticals. Um, the couple of bits that bother me, and you probably weren't wide enough, but that corner and that corner, I really want to see. 
And the other bit is the highlights coming through that window and the highlights in the um, in the reflection. They're just a little bit harsh, and if you can tone them down even more, better still. But it's a beautiful feel to it. And mm, 19. Keith Taylor. Sword. Yeah. Uh, beautifully photographed. Lovely lighting on the on the the hilt and the, the sword itself. Uh, just a little bit of light to give it some shape on the, the pommel at the end. Um, but this bit round here is perhaps lacking a little bit. So perhaps another light in there just to push the shadows away would, would have helped. Um, you've got a highlight on the corner there and you really do need to tackle that it's it's very minor but it's there and once you've seen it you can't unsee it uh not sure what that is and again i think it's probably worth just pulling that damn thing out because it's it's difficult to figure out what what's going on uh i always like coming things coming out of the the corner i think find it often strengthens them and you've put the shadow coming in from the corner so that's fine no problem with that whatsoever be careful with your sharpening you've got a bit of a halo in the high contrast areas again dead easy to deal with just deal with it so with all that said i'm going to give you 18. john statter which leaves the curious goods and yeah it's super 20. Reg Haslam Thank you.